So hi, I am Becca and I work with the White Stalk Project, which is based at Nepp Estate in Sussex, which is a rewilding site, which is what I'm going to be speaking to you about today. Um, and here we've got one of my favourite quotes from Isabella Tree, who's one of the owners of the Nepp Estate. And she says that their aim is to work with nature, not against it. And I think that that is pretty much the perfect way to describe rewilding. So I think you've already had a bit of background on it, but just for a uh, little refresher, um, NEP was a previously intensely managed arable and dairy farm, but it was making losses every year. It was not a productive farm at all. So in the 1990s, they decided to make the change and emphasise national process natural processes and put nature in the driving seat. So they sold off all their farming machinery, they stopped farming and they introduced grazing animals. And this was a completely different way of managing the land because there was essentially no human intervention and these animals, which are free roaming, are in charge of managing the land. Uh, and the animals that they chose to introduce are proxies for species that would have historically lived in the UK and managed the land. And because a lot of those are extinct, they've had to use modern day versions. So we've got the Tamworth pigs, English longhorn cattle, three species of deer, which were roe, fallow and red deer, and Exmoor ponies. And all of these feed in a slightly different way. So we've got ones that browse, so you can see that deer browsing in the branches in the tree. They graze on the grasses. They've all got slightly different diets, uh, which means that they eat slightly different things. Um, between them, they manage the land in a way that takes it from this desert of biodiversity that it was when it was intensively farmed to a mosaic of landscapes with a huge variety in the landscape that's there, which makes it able to support a lot more biodiversity. So I'm going to speak to you about a couple of the examples of this. So the English longhorn cattle, as well as being great at grazing the grass and keeping the grass short, they're also excellent seed dispersers. So they can carry up to 230 different species of seed in their gut, which means that they can eat the flowers in one place and then because they're free ranging to go wherever they want, when they move around and they produce their waste, the cow pats are full of seeds which are it, sat there ready in this perfect compost for them and they grow really well and so this helps disperse the, the seeds across the across the area um, leading to a much more diverse landscape uh, and as well as having lots of seeds in their cow pats there was 23 different species of dung beetle found in a single cow pat and that might sound a bit disgusting and maybe not that exciting but actually this is incredibly good for restoring land so one of the problems that we have is that the soil we have is very degraded. It doesn't have all of the nutrients that are needed because it's been farmed so repeatedly and that's why there's the need for adding chemical fertilizers just to give it the nutrients that are actually needed for plants to grow. But insects naturally would do that job for us. So dung beetles, um, they will live in the dung and then they'll go down into the soil and bring nutrients with them. So this is really important and you may have been told about ecosystem services so just in case this is where the ecosystem basically provides things that will pr protect us and help us. Uh, one important one of those is carbon sequestration so to reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere the ecosystem can store it and healthy soil is much better at sequestering carbon than unhealthy soil. So this is a real benefit as well that's brought about by having these free ranging cattle. And we've also got the Tamworth pigs. So the way they forage is by a method called rootling where they use their snout to turn up the soil and they're looking for roots and tubers and things under the soil, but you can see the effect it has. So in this picture in the top, you can see all this grass in the background, but in the foreground, it's doesn't look very nice it doesn't look very neat and it's all muddy but that's actually excellent for biodiversity because this dry grassy area is not a good place for seeds to grow and for new flowers to grow but when the the pigs root up the soil they're exposing moist soil and they're also exposing seeds that are stored in the soil in what's called seed banks so when they turn up the soil then weedy plants can grow and we traditionally hear weeds and think that they're bad, but actually weeds are essential and they provide some vital food resources to a number of different species. So a couple of these examples down the bottom, 
Again, we think weeds and think they're not very nice. These are actually really pretty, I think. We've got scarlet pimpernel and common firmatry, which are both really crucial food resources for this bird on the right, which is one of the UK's most rapidly declining bird species, which is the European turtle dove. And these feed exclusively on seeds. They won't eat insects, they won't eat flowers or leaves. They need to eat seeds from these natural weedy plants. So because of all of our intense farming and removing these weeds, the turtle doves have not got anything left to eat. So they're declining very rapidly. But they've found NEP and they've found the food resources that they need. And it's actually one of the only populations in the UK where the numbers of turtle doves are increasing. So this is a really positive outcome um, and one that wasn't necessarily planned. They didn't know that this would happen. Um, so, as I said, it's great for biodiversity, so it's brought back the turtle doves. It's also got a huge amount of insect biodiversity. So this was just uh, some of the insects that I saw when walking around. We've got lots of species of butterfly, we've got gatekeeper, peacock, tortoiseshell and red admiral butterflies. There's over 62 species of bees and 40 species of wasps found in a survey at NEP. Um, a few years ago and we know the importance of pollinators so it's fantastic that they're coming back with the wildflowers. We've got this cinnabar moth caterpillar. Um, there's nine species of bat recorded at NEP, there's five species of owls and there is this beautiful purple emperor, the blue one in the bottom corner which unfortunately I have to confess I did not take this photo because I didn't see the purple emperors but the despite the fact that I didn't see them, this uh, NEP is home to the largest population of this very rare butterfly in the UK. So this just shows some of the amazing diversity that has come back to NEP by letting the land just do its own thing and, um, and go wild, essentially. Um, so I mentioned that I work for the White Stork Project uh, and we are based at NEP and this project is reintroducing white storks into southern England and it's a number of partners, one of which is Durrell. Uh, and the reason that we're reintroducing them into NEP is because this area, um, it's got wetlands and it's got grasslands, so it's got the habitat to maintain them. There's also large oak trees where they can build their nests. And something that you're gonna hear a lot about, I'm sure, is the importance of nature connectivity. So people are more likely to preserve something that they care about and they feel connected to. And one amazing way to do this is with flag flagship species. And that's what we've tried to make the white stork, an emblem of rewilding the UK, uh, by bringing in this bird that is a very impressive large bird and hasn't bred in the UK for hundreds of years. It really engages the local people and people across the UK with these projects. Um, we get people to send us in sightings to help us know where the birds are going. And we've had over 300 this year alone, and we've got over 7,000 followers on social media. So that just gives you an indication of how well it's working and it is engaging people and people are excited about it and that's something that's really crucial in modern day conservation. So that was a quick overview of NEP for you. Um, the site in itself is a flagship, it's a popular place and people are inspired by seeing what can be achieved by rewilding if we leave land to nature. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your course and um, have a great rest of the day.